and we are ready to start. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So let me first introduce myself and uh, also my co-host Artyom. Uh, both of us are engineers at very good company that does not wish to be disclosed. Uh, and most importantly, we are kind of technology enthusiasts. Uh, we love to share uh, knowledge and that's the reason we are here today. We are here today to um, present you this workshop called From Zero to Jenkins Master. And um, I'll uh, explain a couple of, uh, a couple in a couple of words uh, what it is exactly and uh, i'll then uh, move forward and give the word to artyom so he will start uh, the class itself so uh, first thing first you have your calendars uh, you have your calendar invites we will meet every other day uh, monday wednesday friday at 12 pm us eastern time and uh, have these live sessions where we will demonstrate you some certain topic about uh, the subject of Jenkins. It can is starting from configuring Jenkins to uh, building uh, automation, uh, managing plugins, uh, of course, creating pipelines, creating pipelines efficiently and effectively and at scale. This is everything that we're gonna cover. Uh, we also have a chat in, in Slack and let me, let me show it to you. So you should have received an invitation uh, to to this room. Yeah, uh, th that's the place. That's our go-to place where we would collaborate uh, when we are not on a session. Uh, you will need to. We will post home tasks um, there, and obviously you need to provide uh, solutions to these home tasks for, for review to us into into this chat. Uh, that, that's our go-to uh, go-to place to share information, discuss materials, and have fun. Uh, hopefully. Um, yeah, uh, I mentioned there will be home tasks and I encourage you to uh, at least attempt to complete them. I know Jenkins complicated topic. You're, I know we are all busy people, but it's not, it, it, there is no point in learning something without practice. And this course is focused on mostly practice. We'll have as, as less amount of slides and as much practice as possible. That's, I would say, 90 or 95 percent practical. So doing home task is essential. Also, I, I really appreciate if you make best efforts to attend each live session um, and yeah, be, be in general as active uh, as possible in this uh, engagement in this seri series of uh, workshops. And a, a couple more logistical moments. Um, when you are on the session, I will request that you keep uh, your your microphone muted. Uh, if you want to ask a question, you can raise hand. There is a button uh, below uh, at, the, at, the, at the lower bar of Google Meet, similar to what I'm doing now. And uh, keep your hand, hand raised. Uh, and when we have time, when we have time for questions, you can, uh, I will let you know that you can ask, so you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the question. Please don't jump in into conversation without raising hand like this. This will be extremely appreciated and can help us keep our sessions organized and material easy to follow, uh, clear and concise. That's everything I wanted to cover. And having said that, I would like to uh, give the word to Artyom, my co-host, and he will deliver this session to you today. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, Artyom, before Artyom started, any, any questions uh, regarding these organizational general moments? Yes, Gotham. Uh, 
would you be sharing the recording just in case if we miss any yes of course we will uh, share this recording on youtube okay thank you yeah and yeah one more thing uh, before we move forward i would ask one volunteer to um, to speak up and uh, basically introduce himself and probably talk on behalf of the group who, who uh, and basically we introduced myself and artyom and now that's your turn guys but only one person and vera i see your hand raised feel free okay vlad do you want me to go now or shall i go with uh, after artem no please go please move forward okay thank you hey first of all both of you thank you and appreciate uh, what you guys are doing for this community it's it's wonderful we would love to learn and enhance our skills and we spread and at the same time i would like to remind everybody including myself this is a you know forum we have to be mindful of respecting each other and doing the task and where we can learn something so keep in mind diversity equity and inclusion is most important and what we speak have to be carefully thoughtfully uh, shared across the board so that's what i want to bring to the table thank you very much brad and adam uh, appreciate for your your time of course thank you for bringing this up very important like an axiom sure we obviously keep mutual respect uh, and yeah having said this uh introductions from both of sides uh we can start the course itself uh so let's dive into artyom the stage is yours okay hi guys uh so let's kick it off uh, i would share my screen and switch off my camera one moment okay just a moment so when we are talking about jenkins uh, first of all we need to provision some virtual machine which uh, is required where we can run jenkins there are lots of cloud services but uh, in my opinion the simplest one is uh, linode.com and you can see the interface it's one of the easiest in cloud and let's uh, start with creating a virtual machine i wasn't prepared uh, just to show you how it is easy and uh, i would suggest to use centos version 9 and for example choose the region is which is close to me and we let's choose uh, this type uh, two gigabytes uh, label for machine Jenkins uh, password it, it doesn't matter because I will be using my um, SSH keys to connect to this machine and uh, let's create it it will be created just in a uh, few seconds and I'd like to say a little bit about myself I'm enthusiastic uh, systems engineer in, uh, some years I was working as a network engineer and I find out that there is a high demand in automation in networking and I find out that devops tools are very useful for this uh, setup and uh, in my in some of my projects i use jenkins as a basement for network automation so maximize screen oh it just uh, increase scale of the browser 
Ah, scale of the browser, of yeah, course. Yeah, same you can do with terminal and uh, with uh, code editor. Okay. So is it better now? Guys, okay, thank you, Boris. So now uh, our machine is up and running and I would connect to this machine. And please allow me to jump in. I believe there is no, it's not hard prerequisite to use line Linode. You can use any cloud provider that allows you to start a virtual machine, maybe Cloud Guru Sandbox if you have one, or even virtual your- Virtual box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or even a virtual machine on your laptop. So it doesn't matter which uh, virtualization will you be using, but uh, I am comfortable with this one. So here we go. We are just logging to our machine. And first of all, uh, I would like to install a Docker engine because uh, we'll be using uh, Docker as a, a virtualization for Jenkins machine. And for, it, for example, it could be Googled very fast. In, uh, Docker install send CentOS. That's the first one. Yeah, we need to install uh, update YAM utils. Just so you don't confuse. It's not a Docker course, but we are using Docker so that we can install Jenkins in the easiest way uh, possible. Uh, mm -hmm. First step, install Docker, and all this command that Artyom is running are to install Docker. And then you will see how easy it is to launch Jenkins when you uh, run, when you have Docker installed. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that uh, for those of us who don't use Docker on a regular basis, uh, it looks like using application on your phone. You just install some application and it's up and running. Here is something like this. We can use pre-configured small uh, Packet with operation uh, system with all required uh, packets with Jenkins inside and just run it. But we need to uh, be required to install Docker first of all. So uh, I suppose less than 50 seconds and it will be installed. If you wish, I can. So actually, this is the Pretty simple guide. You can look at it. We install Yamutils, add package manager, and then we uh, install Docker programs. And then we need to start Docker as a daemon. And just one thing from Docker uh, world, uh, just to be sure that we install it correctly, let's run small Docker container, which is called Hello World. If it runs successfully, we will be see that it is hello from Docker, and we are sure that Docker is installed. So uh, let's move. let's move on. Uh, now I would suggest you to run your first Docker, uh, your first Jenkins Docker run 
uh, hyphen v we run it as a detach mode minus p 8080 80. it's a Port forwarding, uh, it means that you forward port from 8080 of your machine container. Uh, And uh, run from Jenkins, Jenkins. So let's try. Uh, so this is line says that there is no local image find uh, with this name. If we uh, don't uh, mention that we should use the latest one here, we will be using latest image by default and then um, our container is downloaded and i suppose uh, it should be running now let's check yes we can see that our container is up uh, for uh, 13 seconds and let's try to uh, use web interface to connect my public IP address of the machine it's like this, and we use port 880. And I suppose Jenkins is okay, it is getting to be ready. Probably it is good idea to give quick summary of what we've done. Basically, two easy steps. First, actually three, yeah, maybe three, maybe two or three, depends on your setup. First, you provision some server somewhere. Second, you install Docker there. And third, you run just a single command, just a single Docker command that will create your Jenkins for you. And mm -hmm. Artyom, could you get back to history and show this Docker command? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I this highlighted one. this command. Yeah, you can also pa paste it to the chat. It is, uh, I would say, the cornerstone. And a lot of people are intimidated uh, and paralyzed even at the first stage of installing Jenkins because uh, usually guides will suggest that you install some var files some tomcat servers and overwhelmed by all these dependencies and complexities however this command assuming you have docker installed will give you an instance of jenkins almost immediately and the best thing about this if you mess something up you can just delete a container and restart it once again from scratch one more time Sorry for jumping in, Artyom, you can move oh, forward. You are welcome, of course. Uh, so now we have our Jenkins instance. It is up and running, and uh, we can see that we have to enter some initial administrator password. We can find it here uh, at our container. And to proceed uh, to the next uh, stage, we have to insert this initial administrator password. Uh, the simplest way how to do it is just to um, look at log inside the Docker container. And we have a Docker PS uh, to show all the containers which are running on my machine. Let me. So, and uh, there is a comment, docker logs, and the uh, name of the container, my Jenkins. And here we see all the logs, uh, how Jenkins was uh, uh, running, uh, how it was uh, uh, starting up. And here we can see, Please find the phone password to proceed with the to installation. Uh, here is our 
uh, initial admin password, uh, copy paste it to this field, and here we go. Uh, the next step, uh, Jenkins uh, suggests to install some plugins. Uh, let's choose uh, some plugins to install manually. I remove what he asked us to install. Uh, we will be doing it a bit later. The next step is to insert username password. Well, let's, for example, we our username wrong. It's some password. And for example, full name. So, and save and continue. Uh, Jenkins URL, why it is uh, important? Uh, uh, we will be talking about it uh, a bit later at the up following lessons. Uh, you can leave it now as it, it is. Save and finish and start using Jenkins. So uh, Jenkins is up and running, and I suppose it took us uh, less than five minutes uh, to be ready. And uh, please have a look at this place at the right uh, top corner. We have our username, John Smith. And uh, for example, uh, um, we can just i would like i would like just to show you some basic things in jenkins here is a manage jenkins button where can you add some users uh add plugins configure nodes and so on and so on and uh, at the dashboard we can create new item for example, test freestyle project. Mm -hmm. So here we can see that we have, uh, we can see first uh, pipeline. And uh, what should we going to the next step? Uh, as I mentioned before, we installed uh, Jenkins inside Docker container. And the guys, what uh, do you think will be? Uh, uh, what do you think will be if we remove our container and uh, start it again? Let's try. Okay, let me show you chat. Nothing. So I suggest you to stop drinking container. Let's check. Okay, if it is not running now. And let's remove this container. And let's run it once again. The same, the same comment as we done just a moment ago. Okay, now it is running. Let's check Docker, Docker PS. It is up for just some seconds. So what if we refresh browser? Okay, Jenkins is, uh, is getting ready. Okay, so it's almost finished, not yet. So please bear with me a little bit. Okay, now our Jenkins is ready. 
And the game is it asks for initial admin password. It means that we installed Jenkins from the scratch once again, and all our configuration was not saved because it was uh, inside our container. We removed our container. Let me show you command game from my history. What was done? Uh, we write, uh, we put docker stop, then docker rm means docker remove container, and then docker run again. And uh, we got uh, brand new Jenkins instance, and all, all our configuration is lost. So what should we do in this? Uh, in this situation, uh, there is a special directory which is called Jenkins Home. It is inside uh, Jenkins container where all the configuration is saved. And what we are going to do, we are going to create. Uh, directory uh, Jenkins home at uh, our um, server and then link uh, Jenkins home from server to Jenkins home in the Jenkins container. Let's have a look. First of all, let's read Jenkins home directory. Here we can see it. And uh, then let's stop Jenkins instant, which is just what's created. And then uh, I would suggest to run it once again, but with, uh, with, with one uh, with one point. Minus V means is means that we connect volume uh, Jenkins home to var slash Jenkins home to that container and uh, everything else stays the same. So let's try to do it. Docker PS2 check that uh, docker is running and uh, let's look into jenkins home directory cd jenkins home always there is nothing so uh, let's look at uh, jenkins logs Docker logs, Jenkins. Uh, here we can see our initial admin, ad, ad, admin password, and we can use this to set up it once again. Oh. Mm -hmm. Let's wait a little bit while it will be up and running. Okay. Again, copy paste admin password. Oh, I'm not sure. I, I think I copied the password. So select uh, install plugins later. Again, username. Export and full name. Save and continue. Okay, now our Jenkins is ready again to, to be used. And let's check the directory we have 
created on a Linux machine. There is nothing. Uh, what is happening? Why uh, we can see nothing inside Jenkins home? Oh, first of all, let's check out our logs inside uh, Docker container. Docker logs, uh, my Jenkins. Can we find here something which is not expected? Okay, I know the reason why we can't see any content inside Jenkins home, but I'd like to find some proof from logs. Okay, nothing. Okay, actually, there is a rule mismatch uh, between uh, created directory on our Linux machine and inside Docker container. If you run command ls minus la, you can see that the owner and the group of Jenkins home is the root. In root have uh, the, the identification of one. And inside the Docker container, uh, we have a Jenkins user with the ID of 1000. So what do we need? We need to change the ownership or permission to a Jenkins home uh, just to ensure that our uh, Docker uh, container can run inside and we'll write files inside this directory. So let's uh, create user. For example, it actually uh, the name doesn't matter. We can use name John, everything else. Very important uh, to use uh, this 1000. Exactly. And let's change the owner of Jenkins home and change the group to this drone user. And uh, let's uh, set up it let's again, stop uh, Jenkins, remove, create it, a container and run it once again with the new permission of Jenkins Home Directory. I'm sure it is running. Let's try to update browser. Oh, it's very, it's very interesting. It looks like uh, we already have some files inside Jenkins home. Or oh, we just Hmm. Let's revise what it was done. We stopped Jenkins home, then we removed. Ah, we removed. We didn't remove the image. Let's no. Let's try to log in. Mm-hmm. 
So this lets me sometime to ask uh, to find why Jenkins container is not uh, run from the scratch. What was wrong? Okay, let's uh, start it once again. Um, let's remove uh, Jenkins container, stop it, go here. Of this container also. So, okay, yes. So now we don't have any container. And we have Jenkins home uh, directory with uh, the proper permission inside. And uh, so let's move away. And Jenkins home is, ah, it's not empty. We have total eight files inside, but it's, uh, it's interesting why I don't see it. Let's remove Jenkins from directory and create it again. Um, and change owner and group of Jenkins home and Finally, let's start a Docker container once again. Let's check it. Yes, now it's getting to be ready. Hmm. And again, all the configuration is saved. Things that I have no idea uh, from which place the configuration was taken because we just removed Jenkins home directory. It was empty. Then we start uh, a container once again. But uh, but the configuration still remains active. And we can see total of eight files inside Jenkins home. Uh, let's try to define Jenkins home more strict just to use it from the place where it is actually located. So I would suggest to remove Docker with Jenkins, then mm, Let's remove Jenkins from directory. So, 
there is no Jenkins home at my home directory. And let's start it once again, but I would like to point this directory more strict with absolute path to the Jenkins home. Ah, don't create it yet. Make deal. Jenkins home. Jenkins home is created. Change the ownership of Jenkins home. Okay, and then you can run. And let's define the absolute path to Jenkins home directly to be sure run what we need. And refresh browser. Oh, here we go. So it was my mistake. Mm, you can see that uh, from this comment, uh, I was using uh, pass to Jenkins home, and I suppose it was it was uh, wrong pass, and we need to use absolute pass to our Jenkins home directory. And uh, what next? Uh, you know that uh, now uh, we can check for initial admin password using Docker logs. My Jenkins. Here it is. Let's continue. Install plugin lanes later. Just to quick up the process. And just not to be confused uh, with John inside the Linux machine and John here, let's ask him, for example. It is my name. So what is happening? Uh, so it's very good. Uh, what was done? Um, let me revise it a little bit. First of all, uh, I made a directory on the Linux machine. It is Jenkins home directory. And when we were trying to use Jenkins Home, uh, it was it wasn't working because uh, there was mismatch of permission in Linux machine. Uh, I am using uh, Linux machine as a root, and uh, Jenkins image is using Linux as a Jenkins. Uh, so it is required uh, 
too much uh, permissions to this directory and we change the ownership and now we have uh, drawn and drawn a group for Jenkins home and then uh, from the history we run docker container once again with the same parameters except one this is very important it means that we use our volume uh, on the local machine and pass it to uh, docker container so the, everything is here it will be in our machine in this directory uh, so uh, now we can see all the settings inside uh, Jenkins form directory. Let's uh, let's Jenkins form, and here we can see some configurations on our Jenkins. Uh, for example, config uh, uh, file has some configuration of Jenkins. Uh, so what next? Uh, um, so now what happened if we would like to stop and remove Jenkins from this machine, but uh, Jenkins home will remain at the same location. Um, for example, let's uh, create some project uh, test. It will be empty just for example. And just to show you that the configuration uh, remains. So we have test project and a username. So now just to test that the configuration is persistent now. Uh, let's uh, stop and remove this Jenkins instance. Okay, RM. Check that it is removed. Yes. And uh, let's run it once again. So now what will happen? Uh, our container uh, starts from the scratch. It will be used Jenkins Jenkins, but it finds that here contain some files in what Jenkins home, which is actually in root Jenkins home at our Linux machine. And it will be using these configuration files. And now we should uh, see that uh, our first uh, pipeline remains. Okay, we can see this password is required. And you can see that, okay, the configuration is persistent now. Uh, but it's, uh, as you can see, it's not very um, comfortable every time to use some commands like docker run is some keys and you have to know which key to use and so on and so on. Uh, let's use docker compose to run the same Jenkins instance. So I suggest to stop and remove the container and let's create file docker compose yaml. Uh, I have already text. Mm, it's quite easy. So we use a version three and run some services. Uh, we, uh, here we can see the only one service which is called uh, Jenkins. It's just a name. And then the name of our con container is my Jenkins. So you can write whatever you, you want in this field. Uh, then we use image uh, Jenkins from Jenkins. This is uh, for port forwarding from port 8080 to port 8080. Mm, 
for example, we can just change port 80 to show you how it is how it is working. Uh, and I'll, I'll allow me to jump in here. Okay. Uh, why we are using this file? Because there is always a probability of human error when we either, of course, create something manually or type in some comments. And this Docker Compose file allows us to fully automate everything and have some sort of reusable template that we will always apply, that will never change, that will uh, fix our configuration in some certain uh, step uh, stage and s sort of automate this. And my suggestion to you, Artyom, uh, are you sure our volumes are matching right now? Because uh, yes, I'm we... sure because there yeah. is a dot here. Dot. It was okay. my mistakes, but of course we can use a slash. So we do, we don't want. Do we want to change anything or, or not? Uh, so it matches what, what we had here. Yeah, may, maybe this way. So we will reuse uh, our uh, our Jenkins home that we have in the server right now. That's right? Mm -hmm. Right. OK, very good. And so then we use our uh, volumes. And this uh, comment is quite important. Restart always. What it means uh, when uh, you will uh, install some Jenkins plugin at the upfalling lessons, uh, it will be required sometimes to restart Jenkins. And if you remove restart always, you will have to log in to your Linux machine and uh, start Jenkins manually by hand. So uh, I suppose now everything is OK. We saved the file. And let's uh, run our Docker Compose. Docker Compose up hyphen D, also detach mode. This hyphen D is the same as this hyphen D. OK, Jenkins started. Let's check Docker PS. Okay, it's up for six seconds. So let's check. It is not working because we changed the port to port 80. Oh, that's great. So as you can see, everything is working. And uh, so um, I suppose this is uh, what I would like to talk to you about for this lesson. Uh, what was uh, made? Uh, first of all, we provisioned uh, virtual machine in any cloud or in any e virtualization. Uh, let me show you this step. Then we installed uh, Docker engine. And then we was just using uh, very simple Docker manifest, Docker compose manifest. At Docker Compose YAML file. This is our file. It's it's not very big and it's quite simple. And we run it uh, by this command Docker Compose app hyphen D, and that's all. It's how you can run your first Jenkins and work with this Jenkins. And it will be okay to use in, in small environment maybe in small team. And we will be talking about some features at the next lesson. And uh, one moment, I would like to uh, share with you some diagram what we have done. So I have a picture here. And uh, what is done? We have a virtual machine 
Mm, it could be in any virtualization system or in cloud. And then we uh, run Jenkins uh, container and inside Jenkins container, uh, there is a Jenkins software, some program, uh, and it is using a file uh, slash var slash Jenkins home for Jenkins settings. And we link this file to uh, Jenkins home, which is inside our virtual machine. And we were using Docker Compose file as a manifest for provisioning Jenkins. And of course, we were, uh, was connecting to Jenkins with browser. And uh, so that's all. Excellent. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Artyom. We will share some home tasks with you guys. Uh, basically, the home task will be mostly to repeat everything that you got, uh, everything that we demonstrated here. Uh, there will be detailed instructions with comments as well that will allow you to easily follow all these steps. Also, there will be a recording available. And yeah, stay tuned for it. It will take some time to process recording, and I will share the home task itself in our chat. Uh, uh, in order to have to consider home task completed, we encourage that you send us each of you send us a couple of screenshots with having Jenkins running in your browser uh, through various installation methods th that we demonstrated. And there will be advanced optional task at the very end that we haven't demonstrated to you. And it will be your uh, duty if you would like, if you would like uh, an extra uh, extra plus to your grade to complete this and to find out how we can how it can be done and having say that i'm open the floor for the further discussion and i already have uh, i already see a hand raised uh, piyush you're welcome please ask your question uh, thank you uh, so uh, the file permission thing is uh, handled by the uh, docker compose automatically uh, so in the docker uh, docker method uh, we had to uh, uh, change the file permission thing and to create a user. But uh, uh, when we uh, we uh, did this uh, with Docker Compose, uh, there was uh, no command for uh, file permission. So the, uh, is Docker Compose automatically handles this uh, file permission thing? Mm, okay, I got your point. Uh, uh, what was the permission? Uh, Docker Compose is not uh, for permission. Uh, actually, inside the container, uh, we have user uh, Jenkins with the uh, ID of 1000. If, if user with the ID of 1000 is trying to write some files to directory with the owner of the root, it won't work because it doesn't have permission. And what we have done is we change permission on local directory, not inside Docker. Compose and, and, Docker. and Compose does not handle whatever is on the host of the Docker. And by the way, yeah, I will not yet uncover this, but the, the, ta the extra mile task that we have for you is exactly about handling entire ecosystem end-to-end -end, including these permissions including installing docker itself and everything uh, as a single package okay uh thank you uh thank you. thanks for that Anything else? Any other questions from someone else? Okay, very good. If there are no other questions, I wish everyone a great rest of your day or evening. Thank you, Artyom, once again for this demo and talk with you on Friday. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for attending.